Welcome to the After Hours Podcast, hosted by Harry Haas and James Friedlender, presented by My Investing Club. What's going on, guys? Uh, back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, today's just going to be Harry and I. Uh, we're just going to be kind of chatting about the current market cycle um, and then answering some questions from a few of the members at MIC. Um, so we can hop right into it. And, you know, kind of right before we started, Harry and I already kind of gotten into it. We were just catching up and, yeah. and talking and we figured we'd just start recording now. But, you know, we're just talking about how the market right now is is tough. It's I know a lot of guys over the last couple of years who made a lot, I mean, millions of dollars yeah. who now during this market are struggling long and short because there's just it's just a weird one. Right. And it's like the range isn't great. The opportunities are like I would I wouldn't say we had an A plus setup on either side in in almost like a while. months. Yeah, yeah, months. And it's and it's tough. So, you know, and and Harry, for you, like kind of how are you adjusting as a long to this current market? Because I know you're still doing well, but it's like yeah. you're just saying it's just slow. It's yeah. just slower, it's different. Yeah, I think for me it's really always been about uh market cycle, right? So it's been a, a lot for me has been uh, like, if you look at something today on like uh, we're recording on June 3rd, 2022, if you want to go back and look, but like something today, like SOPA, right. They kind of uh, push it pre-market. They kind of form this range. And I feel like, you know, like the kind of like popular thing on Twitter right now has always been this, like, uh, kind of what I've been seeing has been like this high day clear out pattern, right? Where the stock goes to high day, longs are chasing, shorts are, are stopping out because that's where you're supposed to be stopping out. And it just stops, right? And now we're kind of in this weird, I guess, like situation where there's like not as many shorts stuck at the lows because they're all waiting for this like magical high day clear out. So like I, I found that there hasn't been that many shorts that are stuck at the lows. And, uh, you know, it's been really difficult to push back up to high day. Like the past, like kind of cycle that we've been in is that things haven't really been moving to high a day. They've been moving just underneath high day or they've been getting like this kind of secondary bounce, but things really haven't been moving to high day. So I've kind of found it interesting for me. Like I've had to readjust my targets this week to underneath high day to a little bit under, right? And I think for me, it's been all about adapting just to the current cycle, right? This is why you keep a journal just to kind of, you know, scribble down what the market's doing while you're kind of in the moment, right? So like, for me, I always like keep a like a little journal, a little piece of paper for kind of a week by week type of basis where I write down, okay, stocks are having a hard time getting to the highs right now. Or, you know, if I'm long at the lows, I'm going to be, uh, I guess, I'm, I'm going to be kind of forming lower lower targets instead of always looking or depending on that high day push, right? You know, if you're long at 240, <laughs> the high is 263, you have to be, you know, selling underneath 263 for sure right now in these type of, you know, conditions. Maybe next week we'll get a bunch of like high day rippers, right? Things can change you know, on a dime. And, uh, but for right now, for me, it's been like things can't get to high day. So I'm selling below high day. I'm really kind of bearish on my targets. I'm not looking for home runs. I'm not looking for these stocks to rip over high day. You know, I'm just being very conservative with my targets. And I, I think that's just kind of how I adjust. Yeah, it's weird. It's like, it's like right now, like we came from a market in 2020 and 2021 and even part of 19, where I just, I, I kind of like call it like the believer's market. Like there were so many stocks yeah. that would just, they would take high of day and continue. And I feel like we've been in this kind of downtrend in the past like year of there's no continuation. It's very rare. And generally the ones that do continue are like grinders. Yeah. So they're not even like stocks that you want to be in. Like I, yeah. I, I feel like recently it's like, I'm I'm someone like I in my opinion I have a good like read on on stock on like price action and I, you know we we both have seen it a long time and you can get a good feel and lately I find myself like contradicting everything I'm saying like I'm like oh wow this stock feels like it's gonna rip but at the same time I feel like it could just stuff and be over and it's like yeah. how can you take advantage of that like AMLX today I mean it was like there was a there was a moment in there I'm like yeah if this was 2020 this would probably be at 20. This would have yeah. ripped over high of day and yeah. like, despite the seller at 14 and 
and we would have we would have at least seen tested highs and, and yeah. tried to test 1450 or whatever and now it's like how the hell do you even do that you know and as a as a short right now it's tough because there's no range on these plays and and people think like the weaker stocks it's great to short <clears throat> yeah it's true but if there's no range for you to hit like i i need a stock basically like 30 percent and above at least just that's the minimum and that's even like that i feel like i'm scraping the bottom because mm-hmm. realistically what are your targets i mean if a, if a two dollar stock is up 30 percent, your target's probably like 30 or 40 cents away like is that even really worth it yeah. you know it's it's tough so so right now on the short side it's basically just like taking the singles taking the scalps and they come and and you know it's it's tough so it's it's yeah. definitely been an adjustment period for everybody yeah and i think also uh for me, it's always been on like a week to week basis, like how I kind of evaluate and something that Austin and I both do is we have a list of like old runners and like the, this is easy to get. You can just ask in the after hours, someone will have this. Right. And I put it all in kind of a watch list. And when I wake up in the morning, I check it and I say, okay, like how optimistic are we today? Right. What's the overall market doing? What's the overall sentiment? Like you'd be so surprised. Like, if we are in a very like bullish time period, like Bitcoin's running, crypto's running, everything's going crazy. People are crazy optimistic. People don't mind buying at the highs, right? People don't mind buying those types of breakouts because they're less guarded, right? The overall market, like the economy, you know, everything kind of trickles down. And so when I wake up in the morning and I see every single former runner, red or deep red, I'm like, okay, you know, today is like a less optimistic, you know, market environment, right? It's like some people have the, uh, you know, the spy and they rely on that for large caps. But for us, our spy is really that list of stocks and that old list of runners, yep. you know, because like, if you have like three previous runners, like kind of like, you know, running that have ran like four or five days ago that are now trying to start to push up, that's pretty bullish. But if you have everything that has ran in the past like 10 days, red or deep red, that is not as bullish, right? No, it's it's funny. Like, it's funny you mentioned this because I, in my life, like part of the reason I got into small caps initially, um, well, not one of the only reasons, but one of the reasons I liked it because I didn't really have to pay attention to the market, right? Like I didn't have to like think about what spy is doing. If spy was up, down, it really didn't affect the, the trash that we were trading. Yeah. And it's, I'm realizing that as time goes on, and I think a lot of people, like even veterans are learning this for the first time that the, the overall world affects small caps because usually the people investing in trading small caps are like, I don't want to say gamblers, but they're the people that have the extra money to throw into these small caps. They're like, they're the guys that we're, you know, we're shorting into, or they're creating the momentum, you know, and it's like, I'm realizing that every little thing in, in the world going on right now, whether it be inflation, you know, cost of living, yeah. all of that, it's not allowing people like I like friends of mine to like, throw money into the market, because yeah. they because they don't have it, they just don't have that extra capital. And I'm and you see it on these charts. I mean, yeah. it's, it's like, we're just missing that piece of everything of like, the, the, uh, the believers were missing those guys that throw money into these stocks and yeah. then have them run from six to 12. Yeah. I mean, and then, on, and then on the other side, there's just less participants. So even if you're shorting, like for me, it's like, I rely on guys selling, like I rely yeah. on long selling and there's just less participants. So now the range is so much tighter. So it's, it, it's very tough right now. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with the, with the buying power piece because you know, if everyone's optimistic, everyone's making money, low cost of living, uh, you know, people are, you know, taking out like crazy mortgages, people are going insane, they're spending yeah. money left, right and center. That does trickle down to small caps, you know? Yeah, yeah. And Dude, it's, I mean, love them or hate them, right? Like we, this is not a political like podcast at all, but like Trump was good for the market for the fact that he just always talked about it going up. He yeah. always was talking about it, ripping, going new highs, do this. And that gave people that kind of confidence that like, even if they lost on one, there was, they were always right back. Like, oh, I can make it on another and yeah. another. And, yeah. and so that, you know, for him, like that, that was good for us for the longest time. And I think that was a huge, uh, everyone always thinks of the shutdown of COVID and all that. I think that was a lot of it too, though. 
Yeah, no, because people were taking those stimulus checks. They were going, yep. they were going, right? And it trickles down again to when people have that kind of extra money, they go in and they had those stimulus checks. They had whatever, even if it's only $3,500 or $1,000 yep. or $2,000 a person, you do see how yep. much it affects our little ecosystem, right? Even if they're, yep. they're not even putting it into small cap stocks, even if they're putting uh, it into, um, you know, growth names or whatever, it yep. still trickles down. It still, you know, lights the market up. It still makes people optimistic. I find like a lot of people aren't really that optimistic right now. Like, no, not on like, anything. <laughs> I mean, not on anything. Like you go outside and, you know, I'll talk to my neighbors who are like generally a lot of elderly people that live in my yep. building. There's not many like young couples at all. And so I kind of, you know, go downstairs and we're talking and they're, they're, they're pretty bearish on everything, you know, like yep. my grandparents, like I just, you know, had a visit with them a couple of days ago. My grandparents are pretty bearish, right? My grandparents are in cash right now. Like yep. they're, they're, they've been in cash for a little bit and they're like, you know what? Uh, you know, I don't even, I don't, I don't trust what's going on right now. And it's that lack of trust. Like people I find right now, like aren't trusting the government. They're not trusting the news. They're not trusting really anything. And they're not optimistic. They're not spending money. People are tight for cash. And it really does kind of trickle down into our market. Yeah. And it's just, it's weird because we never would have thought that because I guess in our lifetime, I mean, I'm a little bit older than Harry, but in our lifetime, like we really haven't experienced this. We haven't experienced yeah. a market in a in a time where, you know, things just overall are negative, and and, and it's it's tough to see. And you know, I I have like in my head, I use the uh, I call it like the Instagram indicator, and it's like usually when things are great, I have people messaging me all the time, being like, hey, like you know, I want to learn how to trade or what stocks yeah. are there and all that stuff, and and you know all that stuff, and and lately it's like none of that. There's nothing like I don't get any of that anymore. No one's like, "Hey, I want to learn to trade." I yeah. just feel I feel like we, there was almost like that because of all the the stimulus and everyone that got involved. The second the music stopped and like things started kind of dying down, it yeah. just it almost sucked everything out. Like it, even crypto right now, like crypt, how can you invest in crypto right now? It's the least exciting thing in the world. Yeah. Nothing's exciting, so it's it's tough. And I I just think as as traders right now, it's like. We basically just have to tread water until, until things change. I mean, again, I know guys who made big, big money last year and they're like, they're just break even right now, or they're just like small green, you know? And yeah. it's like, it's tough. It's like, there's, we can't get momentum on either side of the trade. Yeah. It's difficult for both sides just due to the, the lack of range. Right. I mean, yeah. uh, something goes up from $2 to 260, right? How much range do you do you really have there? You know, not not really that much. And now, if people were short, they're going to be like, "Oh, well, we have sixty cents. This can fade back to zero, but nothing ever fades the whole, or very rarely fades very the whole rarely. thing, right?" So you got to take like 50 percent of that move, right, from two sixty to 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 two thirty, and then yep. you're kind of saying to yourself, okay, just like you said earlier, is it worth it to trade this for for thirty cents, right? And I find the price action like has been very very wicky. We've we've had stocks that are doing 100, 200 mil, and we're in a thirty yep. cent controlled range. So I mean, to me, it's just like now is a time to really kind of study, and who knows how long this is going to last, right? Yep. I mean. You can also use kind of the, the profitable trading indicator as well. Like who's like up and coming. Like you hear about guys all the time that have been, that have built accounts during COVID. You hear about guys all the time that have built accounts during the regular market. Now I find like, um, you know, there hasn't, been, there hasn't been any superstars lately. It's just a lot of guys who are just treading water, right? I mean, Jack Kellogg, like one of my friends killed it in the OTC market. And a lot of those guys have been, you know, just break even or, or plus a little yep. bit or, or, or minus a little bit or, you know, anything. Right. So it's been kind of like a tough market. Um, you know, I think to me, like when I talk to a lot of people, like for me, a lot of things have been pretty, pretty straightforward, I guess I could say, like yep. you can generally rely on, like, if you're, if you're, if you're along, you know, getting up there around high of day, you know, you can generally rely on us, uh, you know, creating a high, 
going lower and then trying to kind of get into that high a day zone, you can generally rely on types of setups like that. Um, but I mean, a lot of people were like, oh, Harry, like you were kind of bearish on TNXP that ran. But I was just because the market sentiment isn't good. Give me like five more TNXPs and I'll get a lot more yeah. bullish, right? And that, that's the thing. We need a couple of them too. We can't just hit like one stock going over high a day is nothing. And, yeah. and dude, when was the last time we got a stock that gapped up or that ran and then didn't just like give back the move the next day? Like yeah. it's been a long time. Like there's a lot of things we have to see for me to have any sort of like no confidence in shorting right now. Yeah. Like we need, you know, it's, but again, like, like we said on both sides, it's just, it's just not there. So yeah. I think right now it's like the best lesson that I've learned, uh, you know, from, from Bao and Alex especially and stuff is you just have to live a life where financially you aren't stressed because that that's what I'm seeing is all these guys, like I, the few friends that I have and that I brought into trading and stuff, like they're looking for plays like so hard. And it's like, yeah. dude, if I don't trade today, I don't trade today. Like that's basically it. And it's like, I just feel like you need to build a life where financially you are comfortable enough that you don't have to stress about making money Monday yeah. to Friday if you don't have to. Obviously everyone wants to, that it's a hard thing to, to swallow, but the reality is like, as long as you can pay your bills and like, you know, stay alive in like the tougher times, yeah. that's what matters because how much I'm, I guarantee you however long this lasts, this is like a stock market winter, you know, as crypto winter, this is like, this is like small cap winter. Whoever can yeah. survive these times will probably be around forever because they've seen now create the craziest of highs with COVID market in the craziest of lows with whatever you want to call this, five market, yeah. but you know, it's just, it, that, that's it. It's, it's just staying alive, you know? So everyone who's like stressing and like people are beating themselves up every day, I get messages like, dude, I'm, I'm not making money now. What's going on? Like, I need help with this. It's like, well, no one really is. There's a lot of people that aren't, you know? It's, and yeah. it's just tough. So, you know, I, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's hard. I mean, I've been pretty green like each day, not like as yeah. green as I want to be, but like pretty green each day. Yeah. Like, but it's just about adjusting to targets and, yeah. um, and really, really, really just, you know, not being greedy. And if yep. one does rip above high a day, or if one does kind of death candle below high a day, you know, it's important that you're not chasing those moves, yep. right? We, we saw a ton of people who we, you know, we get this like burst of volume, we get this ton of buying and we, we get over high a day. You know, it's important that you're, you're taking some time and, and uh, you know, waiting. Like, yep. I think it's, like chasing those types of candles in this market is death, right? You know, you're better off in this market to, uh, you know, let's say we, we go over high day, you know, you're better off not to long up there. You're better off just to chill, right? Yep. And uh, you're better off, like if we, if we get this massive slam candle, you know, underneath high day and everyone's super bearish on it, you know, you're honestly better off not to short that either, right? Like, I yep. mean, I mean, your risk reward is like pretty bad. And like in this market, like things are so range bound that like just because of the conditions like that is not going to work as well for you. Right. And even yep. if you are shorting that, like even if you're 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 shorting that type of candle, how much range are you really getting? Like you have to be like, are you holding this for like an all day fader? Like, are, yep. is it a scalp? like, are you shorting into support? You know, yep. all those things that you have to kind of worry about. Dude, what's awful with the faders right now is like, it's so funny. Everyone like they they think it's like great and stuff, but the reality is, bro, they fucking suck right now. Yeah. I mean, they the, what happens is the stocks run up, you get a nice entry, and then you're holding it, and then it just goes into this like range bound grind. Like you, yeah. it looks good, it looks good, and then all of a sudden you're like, wait a second, why is this grinding back up towards the highs? Yeah. But it won't it won't stop you out, but it won't it won't go anywhere. Yeah. You know, and, and and something that I've done recently, like I I posted my um my equity curve in after hours a little while ago and for May. And the only thing that I think is keeping me going, because like right now I'm just very steady. I'm very steady up. And I have a couple of those like big days that that bring a parabolic move kind of look in the chart. But yeah. right now it's just, dude, my losses are small. Like it's very yeah. controlled losses. And it's just, I'm keeping them the same. I'm not like, I don't have like one loss that's a thousand and then another loss that's like 3000. Like all my losses are, are, small controlled and my wins right now 
they're like small controlled and then you have that one occasional bigger day yeah. but that's all it is right? it's just staying alive keep keeping the account kind of growing like just like a paycheck like like i almost feel like i'm coming to trade just to get like my average salary and like my average pay and then that's it because there's no opportunity to work harder and, and make more money yet but yeah. Again, it's like you're going to grind yourself down so hard. And then by the time the market changes, your account is gone or you're just mentally fried. Because if you're trying to long everything in this market, you're yeah. probably, it's probably fucking brutal for you. And then the same yeah. thing if you're trying to short everything, pain in the ass. So it's just, you know, it's nothing gives me more comp, uh, comfort too. Like, you know, obviously it's not great for him, but like I, when I see Alex even like have days where it's not easy, it's not easy. He like has a good winning day yeah. and then you have a losing day. It's like, that just should show like, dude, even pros, veterans, like guys who are at the top of this. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not easy. So, but soon enough, we'll get something that will catch everyone off guard. And, and I think we'll, we'll spark things up. But like we said, how just, long have we been saying that? that, you know, Jesus, dude, I was literally just saying that I think in my head, like, I feel like we had a podcast. I'm not even kidding. I want to say close to a year ago where it's just, it's just like, we don't have it. We, you know, it, it's wild. Yeah. And, you know, I guess the it's, only comfort, the comfort thing though, is like that you can still make money in any market. There is yeah. still opportunity. It's just not, it's not shiny and grander. And maybe we just all got a little blinded by COVID. Maybe we got blinded by the opportunity because it was so much. So every day yeah. that we just think that that's, that's what it has to go back to. And the reality is like, I don't think it ever goes back to that. I mean, no. that was, that was special, you know? Yeah. Well, I find we get periods of bullish action. Like, yeah. For instance, the oil sector. Oil was running, brought a lot of sympathies, INDO, you know, all those types of stocks. Yeah. And everyone was super pumped. You know, yep. everyone was like, oh, market's back, market's back. Oil started to go lower. Everything got a little bit quiet. And people were like, yep. people were like, wow, it's dead slow. Yep. <laughs> you know, I really think uh for me, like, like my only edge right now is just relying like on like liquidity at the lows liquidity at the highs yeah. and i mean that's really it right i mean yep. I, it, if i didn't like have that kind of edge and knowledge i don't know where i would uh, where i would be you know because yeah. like first bounce for instance right how many stocks do we see spike up and then fade all the way yeah. back down again yeah right yep that's the type of market conditions that we're in for someone like you though like like, because like, obviously for me, I don't want to see a weak market. Like, yeah. I don't want to see, would you rather like a super, super bullish market or like, what would you, what would be like at the top of your wish list right now for like, like you're, you're a fader guy, you're relying on yep. those kind of all day fader week, yep. you know, pop up fade for the rest of the day. What would be like at the top of your wish list? Would it be super strong market or medium or super, super weak market as long as you can get fills? Yeah. So I, for me, dude, I, I want that super strong market because, you know, like for, for like what, for like what we do, it's, you know, I'm fine with taking cuts because that means, you know, your, the stock's giving you more range. Like nowadays it's like, there's, we're not taking many cuts, like, but there's just no, again, there's no range. It's yeah. like, I'm just, I'm at this point where it's like, I have trouble wrapping my head around trading anything when there is not a great risk reward. Yeah. Like at least like, right. Like three to one is like the concept and the idea you want, but it's hard to get that sometimes. And it, when the market is strong and like really aggressive, yeah, yeah it's tough. It's tough in the short term. Cause like you're getting cuts on the way up, but obviously what do we know about small caps? Once, once the air comes out of the balloon, it, it'll come yeah. down. So it's really just like, we need, I need those guys. I need those believers and those people that just want to run a stock from three to six, you know, because right now, because if you get a stock that runs from three to six and you have a chance that it'll probably fade back maybe towards 450, maybe yeah. four, like maybe, maybe it gives back a, a, most of the move right yeah. now. If a stock runs from three to 360, what's the best case scenario? Three, that's, it's probably not going to happen. It's not going to yeah. go fucking red on the day it's probably gonna fade back to 325 and it's like yeah. okay now how how tight of an entry and how close do you have to be to actually make it worth it so yeah you know it, we all want the same thing that's what's funny it's just it's just getting it there you know and, and when stocks are this week you can't even force an entry it's like you know today i was looking at um like sopa or whatever and it's like mm -hmm. we're we're like seven cents from the highs and i'm like there's just no real entry for me i feel like 
the best case scenario, I make 35 cents and I'm risking, yeah, like the math is there. I'm risking like less than 10 cents, but it's just, it's yeah. not good. It's not what I want. So I'd rather see that thing. That's why I kept saying in chat, I want it over high and I want it to rip over the high a day. Give us a reason for it to come down rather than just stay in this range bound shit that we've been stuck in. Yeah. I think you know? that, uh, also like I have to say to myself with my targets, right. Cause I'm usually in like at the low, like yep. I'm uh, like, for instance, like today I'm like M MLX, like I'm in at like around 13 bucks. Like I'm in at the low, like, I mean, yep. knock on wood, obviously like, yeah, not trying to like brag or anything, but like, I'm usually in like at the low, like, if you, if you like kind of, if, when I go back and like back test myself, cause I'll always do it, you know, month to month or week to week type of basis. Like how good are my entries and what can I get better on? Yep. But nine times out of 10, like I'm never chasing the high. So like, I'm going to be in near the low if I have not stopped out. And so, you know, I'm saying my, for me, it's not a matter of uh, where do I want to get long for me? It's a matter of where do I want to sell? Right. Yeah. And it's like, okay, we have two lines. We have the top line and we have like the second, that secondary high, right? Yeah. How often, and again, there, it's been very, very popular, the strategy of high day clear out, right? How many times have I heard that pattern on calls, talking to people, right? Everyone is after that quote, high day clear up because you're top pick, you feel like a hero, yep. you feel amazing, right? It's it's an adrenaline rush. It makes you feel like you you kind of like, I guess like for a lot of amateur people, like it makes you feel like, you know, you have some type of edge and it makes you feel like, uh, you know, you've, you know, quote unquote made it, right? Just by shorting yep. high a day, it makes you feel like, you know, you're like, I'm going to just wait for this every time then. But yep. I think the problem is, is that now we don't have enough people who are short at the lows, right? Everyone's trying to yep. short the highs. So when you yep. have everyone trying to short the highs, it's never going to get to your entry, right? So I have to go back and say, <laughs> what is the current market like for sales right now? Right now, yep. it's not high a day, right? And that is where keeping a journal can literally help you so, so much. Like saying to yourself, okay, like today on SOPA, did we break the high a day once we opened? No, we no we didn't, no. right? Today on AMLX, did we break the high a day? No, we could only get to 14, high is 14.5. Yep. How come we're not breaking that? Because everyone's short 14.20, everyone's short 270, right? Yep. Because that was what worked for a long while, right? I, so, I, I feel like too right now, like just while you're talking about that, like that, like yeah. I feel like, dude, I feel like algorithms right now. I'm not a I'm not a tinfoil hat kind of guy. I'm never bitching about algos and all that shit. But I, I feel like they know. I feel like yeah, they, well, they're it's obviously a real thing. But I I never like to blame it on anything. But I no, feel like either. algorithms right now are probably having a field day because they know they can mm. just dump liquidity into this and mm. then bring it down and then grind it back up and mm. continuously do it all. It's like a churning system all fucking day. Yeah. You see it. You see it on the tape. It's just like. It's, it's, continuous. It's, it's easier like and like they you know the game is really not rigged in your favor at all no they know yeah. where everyone's long they know where everyone's short they can see where your orders are if there's a bunch of orders up at 265 270 280 they're not going to bring it to that you know yeah of course and so Jesus, imagine imagine you're on sofa and your your only strategy is like okay i'm gonna short high a day you know and it doesn't bring you to that and then you have to watch that entire fade eventually yeah. you're gonna start going back to that secondary line right because you're like oh this is what's yeah. working in this market and then we start ripping back to highs again and you start getting stopped out and you're getting very very frustrated where you can just pay attention to the market cycle and uh you know journal everything down and and you know, and and just yeah. be, be very, very detailed in your trading and what's working and what's not. You know, for me, it's going to be what type of lines are working, right? If I go back and watch my old tape recordings, which nobody of mine used to record every day for me, uh, basically put it on a hard drive and gave it to me. Um, and so if I go back and watch that just for fun or just whatever, you know, I mean, you're still obviously like grinding and working daily. 
And uh, if I go back and watch that, it's funny because I'm like, wow, that used to work back then, but that does not yep. work now. And it's just yep. the market is constantly changing. You have to adapt. And for me, I'm never looking for that that comfort. You know, I, I don't really want to be always living in that comfort of, oh, I've made it. Oh, I've done this. Oh, I've yeah. done that. You know, I, I don't want to be comfortable. I'd rather always be, you know, taking my little book out and saying to myself and jotting down, you know, um, what, what's going on right now? What, what's working right now? What's kind of happening yeah. right now? Are stocks breaking the highs? Are stocks unable to break the highs? You know, yeah. what type of market pattern are we in? You know, we've been in a, a market sentiment where the highs have not really been able to break, right? So, yeah, dude, I, I feel do. like as a trader, as a trader now, like I, this is, this is like the mindset I've always kind of tried to have. And, and I keep it this way is that I'm, I'm confident in my execution. I'm confident in knowing what I know about the market, yeah. but I'm always kind of like humbled to the idea that anything can happen. I mean, we could, dude, how many guys do we know now that crushed 2020, 2021 yeah. and probably gave it all back or yeah. like at least a substantial point, right? It's like anything can happen. So it's just, you know, finding ways, finding systems that allow you to, to grow and keep risk in check through market cycles is really important, which is why mm -hmm. Bao realistically does well and has done well for almost 20 or over 20 years because yeah. his style of trading that he found pretty much works in it works in hot markets, slow markets, dead markets, you know, everything. Yeah. You know, and and that's it. Where, you know, the, that's yeah. the key. Just finding what works for you and in, in the con constantly growing. Like we were just talking a month ago about how we're 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 expanding our playbooks. And, you know, you were doing more like multi-day stuff and I was trying mm -hmm. to get into more swings and like of course I get into swing trading at the dead top of the market. But you know it's like you know that mm -hmm. that's it. It's just constantly growing, constantly adjusting and and you'll make it long term. It's it's the yeah. guys that just think like, oh, this setup will work every time. Like, you know, it's like I love the death line setup, right? It's a great setup when it works, but the reality is we haven't seen it in a long time. So all yeah. these guys that are just like a one trick pony, I mean, yeah. they're gone. <laughs> they don't exist yeah. anymore, you know. So we also we've been rambling for I didn't even realize we just kind of got into it. But do you wanna you wanna attack some of these questions before yeah. we uh, wrap it up? Yeah, sure. I mean, we can talk about this stuff all day. I know I know people are listening. <laughs> Um, any tips on keeping stress in personal life from affecting the mental side of trading would be greatly appreciated. You want to hit it first, Mago? Uh, yeah, I think for me, like I've done a pretty good job separating things because like um, it's, it's very, very easy to uh, it's, it's, I mean, just for me, like it's easy to take a loss and blame it on something. Right. So for me, my approach has been like, obviously, if I'm really, really heated, I'm not going to trade that day, right? I'm, if I'm mad, I'm not going to trade that day. But like, again, how, how, like, for me, it's really like my edge now is like, very good, where like, I'm not really even going into the market, like thinking about the personal side of trading or whatever, right? And, yep. you know, you can also use that kind of three strike rule, right? Or, and that's why keeping a max loss is, is very important. But for me, like that, I don't really let that affect me. Just obviously, if you've gotten a very heated fight that morning, or obviously you've gotten a very, you know, you know, a, a, an argument or a situation yep. that is, that is like, going to like negatively affect your overall mindset negatively going to affect your overall day obviously that's bad but there are always going to be day-to-day -day stresses right yep. and, and it's not necessarily going to come from you right someone could hit your car right you could be yep. walking down the road and someone tries to rob you you could be there's all these outside factors that kind of venture in and how i kind of deal with that is just you have to uh, kind of develop a uh, trading rules and a trading system around that. So you can't let anything, you know, affect you. And that's yeah. why the, let's say you're a big revenge trader and on days you get in a fight, you're always revenging. Well, you got to have a three strike rule. And if you can't follow that, then you're going to, you're going to get in some trouble, right? Yeah. Or you got to be stopping out. It's really, everything comes down to risk management and knowing your edge, right? If your edge is, uh, you know, this is just an easy one to pick out. But if your edge is high day clear out and you are shorting inner lines, like you're already not following your edge, right? You're already, you're already setting yourself up for failure. And it's easy to be like, to, to blame it on things, right? It's easy to blame it on algos, China, 
uh, a fight that happened two weeks ago. It's easy to blame things, but you need to take your own accountability uh, in your own trading and say, okay, I'm not following my edge and I'm not following my system. Regardless of what is happening in your personal life, you need to follow uh, your plan, your edge, and your system. And if you can't do that, you're going to lose on the best of days as well. Um, yeah, that's kind of sure. how I see it, James. If yeah. You yeah. I mean, like for me, like I know I'm actually like, uh, it took me a long time to realize this, but I am emotional um, as a trader. I don't, I don't jump into shit. Like I don't like, you know, freak out if I'm down or like, you know, I'm not like an over trader, any of that, but I do like, if I have a bad morning, it is something that has affected me in the past because yeah. I just, I come to the market and I might be a little bit more aggressive, even if it's like 5% more aggressive. If mm -hmm. I've done things like that. So basically like what, why I changed to like a different style of trading for myself was because I wanted a system in place that like my entry, my exit, all of it, my criteria is pretty much done out for me. Like I, yeah. you know, at this point I know, I know where I'm going to enter, where I'm going to add and all that stuff. So it kind of takes out that, like my brain doesn't feel clogged anymore. There's no, mm -hmm. there's no conflicting like, Oh, you know, my fucking, you know, my girlfriend was bitching at me this morning. I'm pissed. And then now I'm going to double down size here and make all this money and fuck her. You know, like, yeah. that's just, those are the thoughts that not that I had them, but like, there's multiple things in my head at the same time. So it's like, mm -hmm. now it's like, there's nothing to it. And it's just a loss is a loss. I know where I'm going to stop out. I know where I'm going to do everything. And, and it just, it, for me, that's how I handle it. Because the reality is there's stress every day. We live in a, a, a high like functioning like crazy environment in the world and it's just every day you're gonna you're gonna see the news you're gonna see there's a war going on you're gonna see covid's this covid's that yeah. you're gonna be stressed every fucking day and you're, you're you might not even know it yeah. so it's just it's best to have like you said a system in place with rules and if you can't follow those rules then you're not going to be trading a long time anyway so yeah that's it you know yeah i mean also like if you are let's say you run a business and you sell canoes at a lake right? Regardless of whether you get in a fight with your girlfriend or not, you're still going to have customers coming in, Yep. right? You're, you're still going to have people who want to go kayaking or canoeing yep. on a sunny day, right? And you can, you can't, if it rains, you can't be like, oh, just because I got <laughs> in a fight with my girlfriend means people aren't coming into my business anymore. It's like, no, yep. bro, it's raining, right? Yep. So it's like, you know, everyone's very, very good at finding excuses. And I understand, like, you get in a heated fight, you know, your girlfriend, maybe maybe you don't want to sell canoes today, right? Maybe you want to do something else. That's fine, right? You own your own business, you're independent, that's fine. But, you know, you really, 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 and I know trading is different, and I know it's an emotional game, but just for that example, like, you really, really, it's just like James says, like, James has his entry, his exit, everything written down, so it's robotic, it's really how concrete your plan is. You know, the less concrete your plan, the more you're going to get taken advantage of in the market, right? The market is an emotional game. It's going to prey on your emotions. These stocks prey on emotional traders, right? So if you don't have a concrete plan, plus you're all screwed up, like emotionally, you are in for a recipe for disaster, right? Yeah. You know, That's your <laughs> your canoe shop is going to burn the fuck down. Like, <laughs> You're going to be getting that unemployment check soon. No, yeah. I, I tell my guys this because, like, obviously, the same thing, right? It's very different, but we're barbers. And it's like, dude, trust me. Sometimes the last thing I want to do is fucking talk to a client. Like, sometimes I have a bad day. Like, the other day, I, yesterday, I got called. State board was there doing an inspection. Usually, that means big fines are coming or some bullshit, you know, that we're going to deal with. Uh, luckily, knock on wood, nothing happened. But... Like I walked in already in a bad mood, but you know what? Like I've told my guys, we have system in place. Like we have basic, it sounds stupid, but I have a basic list of questions that like, if I'm not in the mood to talk, I'll ask my client questions and that will allow them to kind of do fill the dead air. And I don't really mm -hmm. have to focus on it. And because guess what? If I went in there and the first guy was like, Hey, how's your day? I'm like, shut the fuck up. Well, <laughs> what's going to happen to my tip? Right? I'm going to, I'm not going to get a tip and he's probably never coming back. So <laughs> it's, it's the same thing in trading systems in place. Have, have it all written down and, and you can kind of overcome that, I think. Mm -hmm. Another guy said, like, how do you narrow down plays? I often get distracted watching too many. Um, yep. James, if you want to hit that one first. Or I can... how, to not get how to not get distracted. So, or, and how to narrow down plays, not get distracted. He finds himself watching too many plays. Trades long yeah. and short, but he misses his entries because he's distracted. Yeah, so, uh, so for me, like, 
I think 99% of the time when you're like a small cap trader, you're looking at stocks that are moving. Yes. But if you really pull it back and Austin says this all the time, actually, he's like, if it was a different scenario, would you really be trading this stock? Like this is, this is why you can't just be, I can't, you can't call yourself, I feel like a momentum based, like scalper or something, because you could do that on every stock, mm. but you need a setup. Like if you don't have a setup, like for me, that's why the same thing. It's why I changed to something that I know I, there's certain criteria that has to get met. If the criteria gets met, I'm allowed to trade it. If not, fuck it. I turn, I take it off. I don't mm. even touch it. Like I don't think about it. And mm. it's like, how setups in place, like hair, that'd be like Harry, like, how many stocks pop up on the scanner, right? This morning, I think like I got like 10 dings that stocks popped up. And that'd yeah. be like Harry longing every single fucking one of them. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Even though, yeah, that's that's what he does. He longs stocks that are that are going popping and making a setup. But Harry has a setup that's going mm-hmm. to he waits for, he lets it get to his entry, and that's it. I mean, if you mm-hmm. if you can't identify, like I, I like to pretend I'm an, I'm interviewing at a hedge fund, and the hedge fund manager is gonna ask me, hey, what are your setups? What do you trade? If I just say I short small caps, he's going to slap me in the face. He's going to be like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Like, no, you need to identify your setup, t- be able to articulate it to someone, and then I think you're allowed to trade it. Yeah, I agree. And I think for me, it's like, okay, uh, we have 10 stocks pop up in the morning. Which one am I going to trade? Well, for the first like 15, 20 minutes, I'm not going to trade any of them, right? I'm going to wait and I'm going to look at the price action and I'm, I'm going to see what I want, right? Then it comes down to a little checklist in your head, right? What's the flow, right? What is yeah. the, what's the institutional ownership? I don't really check dilution anymore just because I, I go in with the, the mentality that every stock has an ATM and I go in, you know, fat ATM, they can dilute. It's an all day fader, hundred percent. And that keeps me from logging random bullshit, you know, yeah. but also it's like, okay, what is the daily chart like, right? If we have a stock, that has been active for, let's say between a dollar and $2, it's really active, everyone's talking about it, and then we gap up to three the next day, right? Yep. Um, you know, again, what are, we, are our shorts going to be trapped? Are longs going to be trapped? Who's bag holding? You have to differentiate that, and you have to really paint the picture, right? You know, is this stock on SSR? Is this stock doing this? Is this stock doing that, right? This whole kind of like checklist that goes in your head, you know, is this stock broken? Like. Is the high $3 and we're opening up at two? Where is VWAP on this ticker, right? You know, and also uh, a big thing for shorts is just not shorting the lows and not shorting into support. You know, there's a ton of guys who see a red candle and they're like, this is it, this is done, this is it. Again, that is the market taking advantage of you. You need to have a concrete plan, a concrete entry, a concrete exit, a concrete stop, and, and that's it, right? If you you know, can't even follow those basic rules of trading, then you're going to get in trouble. It's the old saying, you know, we have a stock at two and we're waiting for 250. And then you see 220 kind of stall a little bit. And you're like, oh, I can take 220. And you see 230 and you're like, oh man, I'm adding. Then you see 240 and you're like, oh man, this is it. Like, this is it. 240, there's a line here. We get to 250 and you're like, shit, bro, I got to stop out. I'm in too big, too early. You stop out and then it goes lower and you're like, oh, well, what did I do wrong? You know, but you're not following your original plan. And that's a problem. Like I get so many people who are longs stock spikes at the open, they just jump in. They don't even know why they're in. They just jump right in. And I'm like, bro, like, are you even following any type of process or any type of plan? They're like, well, it ended up following my original plan. I'm like, well, yeah, no shit. Like, I feel like everyone has the same types of plans generally, right? Everyone has the same types of plans. The problem is, is just like, if you can't follow it and you get in too quick or you're not waiting for your lines and you're not waiting for your plan, you're just going to get taken advantage of. And that's it. You're just going to get taken advantage of. Um, Another one is, uh, I know even the most seasoned traders struggle with emotions. Can you share any techniques you've learned to take emotions out of your trading? For me, it's just following a plan, right? (laughs) Yep. Planning, following a plan. If you don't have a plan, you are going to be emotional. You're going to get taken advantage of. That's it. Can you guys talk more about readjusting plans? Um, I mean, yes, you can readjust. But I think if you're newer, that's a bad habit. You know? Agreed. To, yeah. to be honest, like for someone who's like a 
a pro like Alex, Alex is like, okay, I'm waiting for outer lines. And then he sees like maybe like a massive stuff or a tank at VWAP. And then he readjusts. Like for someone like Alex, that's like experience based, right? And if Alex writes that he's readjusting his plan in the chat, then maybe you can take a look at readjusting yours too. But for a long, like, could you imagine readjusting your plan averaging oh, down every 10 <laughs> cents? Like you're like, oh man, like I'm gonna I'm gonna buy a 250 and then <laughs> 255 you're, you're chasing and i'm gonna add it i'm readjusting bro I'm, <laughs> I'm readjusting you know that doesn't really work right so to me it's like if your line is the only way you can readjust the plan in my opinion is if you're not in the stock but like you see a signal to top out like if your line let's say is let's say today on so right? High is 263. Let's say we get to 260 and we stuff, then you can say, okay, I'm going to short the pop, right? But yeah. that's like one of the only little ways. Because if you had have said, oh, I'm going to uh, short into, I'm going to short a view app when it gets there, right? Before we even got, well, we did get to 260, but like before we even kind of had that stuff move or had that topping action, you would have been stopped out again. Right. So yep. as long as you're not chasing and like your plan is like, okay, I'm going to wait for resistance. I'm going to wait for a pop. Like that's okay. But again, that's risky business. Readjusting no, your plan yeah. after the open. Right. Yep. Dude, I, I think in my opinion, and this is going to sound super harsh, but I think 99% of people are not, including myself, are not talented enough in trading to adjust plans on the fly. And I mean, and there's some multiple reasons because one, Price action is tricky. Like you can get fake. I mean, everything we say is kind of just, no, it's an educated guess. If I'm like, oh, I feel like the stock's going to, like Terry says stuff, I feel like the stock's going to rip. It's an educated guess because we've seen it before, but you don't know for a fact what's going to happen next. So yeah. if you're just in the moment and you're like, oh, quick stuff, like sometimes your brain tricks you. I mean, it happens to me all the time. A, a stock stuffs and I'm like, oh, it's dead. And the next thing you know, we're back up to where we were. I mean, same on AMTX or whatever today. Yeah. That's what it did. It stuck back like a dollar and then bounced back up to the highs almost. And it's like, yeah. you, you can't adjust. Like if you're truly a profitable trader, I think you know that like adjusting plans mid-trade like doesn't really work. You get yeah. emotional, you know, it's like, that's why you have a plan. That'd be like yeah. me writing down my plan, my entry, exit, add all that. And then saying, right. fuck this, this stock had a seller here. I'm, I'm getting in now. Yeah, that just, exactly. to, I'm not good enough for that. So I yeah. think, you know, you know, just as newer traders, if it doesn't work to your original plan, then fuck it, dude. People need to be okay with losing or missing. It's okay. Yeah. Um, how did you transition from scaling to one bullet slash line? Um, that's more for James, I think. Okay. Um, I just sucked at scaling. I realized that my losses were too big, um, and I just wasn't good at it. I... I found that I would get emotional because again, it's like you're scaling and, and I found it hard to make a plan to scale because if I had a plan to scale that 500 shares, four bullets, you know, and I only hit two of them, I wouldn't know how to then adjust my plan. Be, All right, how am I going to get the rest on or what am I going to do? So I just had to, I looked at charts for a long time and, and figured out, you know, Hey, I need to have more of a system base where it's one entry with a set risk and, and go yeah. from there. And then I've made videos on it too, kind of moving my risk down as I trade. You know, like I, I don't just keep my risk the same always. And I add and, and my risk yeah. gets a little bit bigger. So yeah, that's about it. When when do you cut versus attack higher? Like this is all re related to scaling. When to cut, yeah. when to attack higher versus scaling. I think like when you're scaling, like you have to have a plan. You have to know what your average is, right? It's one thing yep. to say, I'm going to take 100 shares at each line, but you need to know that your average is going to be somewhere in the middle, right? And that's the problem for a lot of people is that they don't understand where their average is at before it's too late. They look at their PL and they're like, yep. wow. Like in order to scale, you have to be taking, you have to be willing to size up more on each line, right? Yep. yep. And so, because that's what is going to bring your average higher. So you have to really go from, you know, if you're using max 100 shares, you have to go from 25 to 50 to like, you know, 100 kind of, yeah. you know, you have to bring that average up as you go. That's the yeah. trick to scaling. And if, if you're just trying to say, oh, well, I'm only going to use 100 shares, you better believe that, you know, 80 or 50 or, you know, 
more than half are near your best line, right? Yeah. And that's why yep. it does take a lot of size to scale. And you need to understand the mathematics of this, right? Where is your average going to be in your plan, right? I think a lot of people, it's easy to just say, oh, well, I'm going to scale 100 here, 100 here, 100 here, 100 here, and then maybe stop right here, you know, yep. right? But it's like, <laughs> yeah. instead of that, you should be saying, I'm going to use like less than, I'm going to use like 30% here. I'm going to use like another, like, you know, a little bit more here. And I'm going yeah. to be thinking about the mathematics and I'm going to be really, uh, yeah. you know, I'm going to be, you know, straightforward and like, cause like you need to know where your average is at. And that's the problem is like, yeah. if you're not doing that extra step in knowing where your average is at, like you're going to get in trouble. Yeah. Also dude, people need to realize like, and this is an easy way to say it is you're either Bao or you're Alex. Alex scales 30% and keeps his stop to where he knows he's wrong. And he stays small. And then when it confirms to him, he adds, right? Whereas mm -hmm. Bao, Bao will keep a lot of his bullets like either the same size or like a little bit bigger as it gets higher. But he's a robot in the fact that he'll cover out. So if he protects his average or if he has a bad average, he covers out on dips because he knows he's going to bring his average up higher yeah. and make back even that tiny loss. Or even so, I've seen him scale 500 shares, like a bunch, and then he'll just cover out like, a thousand shares on a small dip. So then he's up like a hundred bucks, but then he does it over and over and over. So it's like, you can't scale like bow, but then want to add like Alex, in my opinion, it's, you got to pick yeah. one or the other because it gets too hard pick one. And they, they both work equally as well. You yeah. just, you can't, you can't overdo it, but. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. We, we can talk like literally forever. No, it's like our I longest know. podcast in the world. I know we should, we should cut this off. But it's, yeah. This has been, uh, yeah. But yeah, but, thanks yeah. everyone for, uh, for watching. Yeah, of um, course. We'll be back. And uh, yeah, we'll be back with uh, another one shortly. So thanks. Oh.